uh, fun to get Martin and myself and Emma to play some really difficult stuff which um, reason recorded all wrote. So that's how it started. So we're going to start with a recording you made in 1925 which will be Martin Litton and myself um, and it's a, a popular tune called Ukulele Lady. He recorded this with his orchestra and then went in the next day and made a very quick recording of it just with banjo and piano. Ukulele Lady. There we go. <coughs> right. Alarm. with uh, uh, Michael McQuay playing the part of Nathan Glantz, who was a, a, a performer who definitely had at least one and a half feet 
in the ragtime camp. <laughs> on the back image, and then we'll go on with Send Back My Honey Man. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Some of this stuff is so unknown that even we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> uh, this, this one is, is perhaps the most obscure thing we're doing today. Um, Harry Reeser wrote one violin solo, and Keith, being Keith, had the sheet music for it. But he, he sent it along. That's fairly sort of fairly horrid, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is it. It's never recorded. We don't know how often it performed, but uh, he did play the violin. <coughs> so here, um, certainly a premiere in Whitley Bay, probably a premiere in the UK, possibly the world. <laughs> this is, is it, what's it called? called? Fooling the Fiddle. Yes, I can't help wondering whether I'm the first fiddle player to be fooled into. You might be. <laughs> Thank you. 
Chris Hemmerfish. Lovely, well done. And Martin Nissen, of course. There we go. Well, um, as Martin uh, said, uh, this is all Keith's idea. He got us to play these uh, highly unusual pieces. Now, we're kind of going to go through, uh, really, with the, the pieces that have been chosen. Everything about Harry Reeves. The first piece which I played was one of his popular 1920s, kind of roaring 20s, uh, hot numbers. Um, you know, um, Send Back My Honey Man, the tune which Martin and, and Michael and, and uh, Martin very much just out of the ragtime era. Harry Reeser was just going on to banjo playing. Now, when he came out of the Conservatoire of Music, he had um, been playing violin and saxophone and all sorts of things. And uh, he was a child protege on piano as well. So he could really do anything, and his arranging uh, was interesting. So apart from his, the commercial side to his career, which is he was on the wireless, a lot in America. The other thing about him is, is that he probably was on more recordings than anybody else in the 1920s. A bold statement to make, but it's probably true. Uh, he, he recorded hundreds if not thousands of records. And consequently, he did something that not many banjo players have done, and that is he became a millionaire <laughs> from playing the banjo. <laughs> I'm halfway there. <laughs> um, but he was very foolish because in the 1930s when he could have raced his speedboats and enjoyed his money, he decided to take a band on the road. And, you know, the old thing about, uh, the old joke about how do you become a millionaire being a band leader? Well, start with two million, you know. <laughs> That's what happened. So, anyway. We go back to uh, the next piece. This is a piece by Edward German, and uh, it's from Henry VIII, and it is the Morris Dance. Now, this is quite a famous piece of music. He wasn't adverse to getting the old light classical piece and arranging it, and uh, this is one such thing that I, I, I don't know when this was ever played. I don't know, and certainly the last piece that Emma played, I shouldn't make it play at all. So this is Harry Reeser's of an interesting arrangement of the Morris dance by Edward Jim.
Uh, so we welcome uh, Mr. Martin Wheatley back, who's going to play one of uh, Reza's wonderful uh, solos on the Tanner banjo. I just point out to you that, you know, Bert Whedon play in a day on the guitar. You know, he made a, a fortune out of writing instructional books for um, um, playing guitar and things in the 50s and 60s. We all had them. We all went through those books. Harry Reza was doing that 30 years before. And he was a bit of a bit of a, a one because he made his solos harder every year so that people couldn't quite ever be as good as him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you to the mercies of that one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is the clock and the banjo. Um, according to the sheet music, it's the last word in novelty banjo solos. I'm um, prepared to take that at face value. It um, has a number of novelty effects. Um, tick tock, I think that should be quite clear. On and winding the clock, clock running down. Well, you'll hear it all anyway. This is the clock and the banjo. Uh, pre 
digital music there. Um, wonderful stuff. Thank you, Martin. And uh, it, well, it's a really, <laughs> it's um, it's really tricky stuff. It just goes to highlight the uh, um, how uh, fabulous uh, Harry Reeser was. He could play all of these things quite easily. Now we're going to end up with a grand finale. We have the Whitley Bay Clique Club Eskimo Orchestra. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is because Harry Reeser, he got a wireless program, okay? And he was sponsored by the Clique Soda Company. And consequently, he called his band the Clique Club Eskimos. They came on stage with Eskimo outfits. Um, there is a, a, some wonderful photos of them in the Eskimo outfits. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't have time to get the outfits out, although there was strong opposition from some parties. Um, and so, you know, a couple of nights a week, they went on, uh, they went on the radio, and they would broadcast this uh, stuff. And Clique was the signature tune of, of, of the radio program and the Eskimo band. Um, I will just point out that Harry Reeser called a lot of his solos interesting names. Frosted chocolate, ginger snaps, lollipops. And if you're wondering why he called them these funny names, they were soda drinks made by the Clique Club, or well, the Clique Company. So he was a very good company man who was endorsing all of his company's products by writing songs about their products. So we leave you with this. This has been arranged uh, by... Martin, we have Jakob, uh, Nick, we have Josh, we have uh, someone on Susan Pam. Mr. Martin Mitten. Okay, Mr. Malcolm Sked on Susan Pam. Uh, we have uh, Miss Emma Fisk, and we have Jakob as well. So we'll get to the melody banjo, the second banjo, and I have reached the heights that I've always been aiming for. Third banjo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a banjo of Yeah. <laughs>